Now, there's so much things that happen over time when you're in prayer. So say like you're praying like one day and say this day is like August the 2nd. At the end of August the 2nd, there is a portal that you have opened up through seeking God. And in that portal is information that comes to you. Now, what happens is October, uh, August the 2nd could be the day where the portal opens up. By the time August the 3rd comes, the portal is shut again. So when August the 3rd comes, then you have to reopen a portal. Now, here's the powerful thing. Is not just one portal that you that you can open in a day. Depending on how much you're seeking God, you can open more than one portal. So let me give you an example. So say August the third, you 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 seeking the Lord, you open up a portal. But all throughout that day, you are in consistent communication with the Father. You're listening for Him, and then you're also letting Him use you for something. While he's using you, there are consecutive portals being opened. So what, 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 what could you look at when you see Balaam? When Balaam is hearing God talk to him in the night and tell him tomorrow, before you go anywhere, come to me, that's the, that. while God is talking to him, the portal is open. When he wakes up, he goes on the way. The portal is shut. Now, here's the massive thing about this. Inside of the portal was his prophetic sight. Inside of the portal that shut was his eyes in the Holy Ghost. Inside of that portal was his ability to see angels. Inside of that portal was his strength to be submissive. So while he's moving, the donkey moves away because the donkey is entrusted with the portal. Balaam is not. Balaam sees the angel. Uh, 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 Balaam's donkey sees the angel, but Balaam does not. The donkey is looking at an angelic being and Balaam sees nothing. Balaam just looking at natural stuff. He don't see nothing. And there's an angel right there waiting to kill him. So it's important for you to open up portals by prayer and by praise also. Throughout life, Throughout the course of your life, you'll be able to do a lot of supernatural things if you are studying the word. It's important that you study the word and not the whole Bible. But even you'll need the Holy Ghost to show you what in the word to study. Did you know that if you are studying the word in the flesh, after you finish studying, you won't learn nothing. That's very powerful what I'm telling you. And that's how you know that you're studying the word in the flesh. The Bible talked about being rightly, divide, rightly dividing the word of truth. So imagine you could be doing something that is so divine, which is reading the word demonically. And then what happens is when you have a bad experience with the word and you don't understand it, that's how also Satan takes away the desire in the future to study the word. So it's like an oxymoron, like you're doing something incorrectly. So now your incorrect experience with it will overshadow you the next time you attempt to do it. It's like if somebody goes to the gym and they start working out wrongly and then they throw up. 
the next time they want to go to the gym, all they have in their brain is I got sick. I had to be rushed to the hospital. But they was doing something wrongly. They had their foot up in the air. They was hanging off like a monkey. And they was doing weird workouts wrongly. They got dizzy. They threw up. But now the next time they want to go to the gym or they hear about going to the gym, it's overshadowed by that. Even the Holy Ghost told me not to go to the gym. I switch. I, I haven't played basketball in probably like over a month or something. Almost over a month or something. I can switch with the Spirit of God. That's what, that's people that have real strong prophetic grace on them and real strong apostolic grace on them is not really predicated on prophesying and ministering to people. It's predicated on when you have a real prophetic anointing, you're not hooked to nothing. You're only hooked to the Lord Jesus. So whatever the Lord Jesus is living out through you, that's what you live out. That's what it means to be prophetic. In the prophetic, there is no strongholds to the flesh. There's only a stronghold to the spirit. That's, it. that's, that's, what, it, that's what it's all about. I haven't gone to the gym in probably like months or whatever. I haven't gone to the gym for a long period of time. And I, I don't miss, I don't miss what the Holy Ghost is not instructing. Why would you let your brain consider to become frustrated with something that God has not scheduled for you? Why? It's, it's a level of insanity. Why would, it, why would you let it bother you? And then there's also another realm that you got to catch prophetically when you're being trained to love God. Don't pursue things without his leading so that when he rebukes you, now you having a fight because you done took a percentage of yourself and you, you, you strengthened your appetite there. My goodness. You, you strengthen your appetite there. So now... You are in the place of a hard thing happening within you. Saints, when Elisha asked for a double portion of Elijah's spirit, what did Elijah say? You have asked a hard thing. And a month ago or so, the spirit of the Lord began to talk to me about why Elijah said he has asked a hard thing. Why did Elijah respond? You have asked a hard thing. And then we see in the word, I think it's Jeremiah, say, is there anything too hard for God? Nothing too hard for God. So why would Elijah say, when Elisha asked, he said, you have asked a hard thing when you ask for a double portion of my spirit, because here's what it meant. It says, I teach you so that you can understand even, even if you're a child. It don't matter how deep I am, I'm able to articulate to you easily where you don't have to be dumbfounded and say, oh, a prophet knows something. I don't know it, but maybe he's the only one that can understand it. I break it down to you so that you can understand. So I bring you into the realm. I'm, and, and I wanted to also talk to you. I'm going to talk to you about this as well. Why angels... Why, what they do in your presence. Angels do different things. Sometimes they are pouring oil on your head. That means that there is a new level of information that is going to overshadow your brain cells, your flow mentally, your flow emotionally. They pour oil on your head because there's something new coming to you. 
they are sometimes in the in the um uh in the spirit Elijah will come and Elijah is pouring oil because now the spirit of Elijah is coming on you. What is the main thing that the spirit of Elijah does? Yes, it prophesies, but it's a spirit of reconciliation. Reconciliation, what it says uh, in Malachi, to return the hearts of the fathers to the sons, the hearts of the sons to the fathers. Now, what was the significance of this? If you look at the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they're all of faith. And if they're all of faith, they're all of bringing pleasure to God. So the spirit of Elijah reconciles you back to being a pleasurable experience for God. The hearts of the sons, these are those that's, that's coming after the fathers. To, and remember what uh, Galatians 3 talked about you being the children of Abraham. And all throughout Galatians talk about you being the children of Israel, Abraham. So the hearts of the fathers... Were, were hearts of faith, hearts of seeking God. Remember David, he was a man after God's own heart. So his heart was after God's own heart. So so um, then we look at uh, Psalm chapter 24. It says, what is that generation that seeks the Lord? He called them Jacob. Is the generation that seeks the Lord. I think that's Psalm 24. In verse one, when it talked about in verse two, it talked about who can ascend into the hill of the Lord, who can stand in his holy place. He that have clean hands and a pure heart. Then it's, it's talking about the generation that seeks God. That's all. And it called them Jacob. So remember Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. So let me show you why Elijah when he said, you have asked a hard thing, what was he telling Elisha? When Elijah told Elisha, for you to ask a double portion of my spirit, you asked a hard thing. Because Elijah's spirit had the ability to recognize when something is off, when something is corrupt, when something is evil, when something is disorderly. When something is of witchcraft, when, when something pleases God, when something makes God happy, when something needs to be increased, when something needs to be quickened in somebody's life, Elijah had the ability to read how God was evaluating situations. So when Elijah is telling Elisha, you have asked a hard thing because Elijah is saying, when I am upset with somebody and then you laughing with them, when I don't want to connect with somebody and now you're pursuing their favor, when I don't like this, but you like it, when, 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 when I don't like your hairstyle, but you don't catch that I want you to fix it. When I don't like your dressing and you don't catch that, I want you to change your dressing. For you to receive my spirit, that means that the same level in which God is talking to me about things and people that the natural man can't even comprehend is nothing to him. He will actually think it's foolish. Now, God not aggravated because I did this. No, no, no. I didn't mean nothing by it. I don't think God will be upset because I said that. But Elijah's spirit knows that God is upset. So when Elijah is saying you have asked a hard thing, he's saying you have asked to walk in the same realm of sensitivity that I have. And when I know that that's a stupid question, you're going to know it's a stupid question. When you get invited to go to that funeral, and I already know not to go to the funeral, if you receive a double portion of my spirit, you are already going to know, be disgusted not to go to that funeral like me. So you have asked a hard thing because can you really accept that level of wisdom and commitment to the truth, 
Not no bull. Not no fake stuff. Not no stuff that up there you sugarcoating it and you casualizing it and you acting like it's not all that big. No, you blowing it out of proportion. No, 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 no. This is how God sees it. So that means if Elijah is on Facebook and Elijah, his spirit wants you to comment, but you're not commenting. So Elisha, how you going to ask me for a double portion of my spirit? Because my spirit wants you to comment. <laughs> so my spirit wants you to like my post. My spirit wants you to sow a seed. My spirit wants you to share my broadcast. And my spirit wants you to be excited about my doctrine. So if you asking for a double portion of my spirit, you're asking to come into alignment with my psyche, my psychological evaluation, how my brain processes things, how the father exposed to me things should be done. Now you know. He said you've asked a hard thing. He's saying you asked a hard thing because this means that when I ask you a question, I ain't got to think that you slow. Wait, wait, you. What you think about this person? Well, I think that they um, they're great. They're mighty. No, I, I think that they evil. I think that this, they deceitful. Oh. Wow. I, 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 well, I didn't think that they was deceitful, but now I know. <laughs> You, you, can't, you can't receive a double portion of somebody's spirit and you actually can't even see what they see. You don't know what they know. You don't feel what they feel. You don't sense what they sense. You can't hear what they hear. They hearing God say, this person tricky. You hearing, oh, this person, they should be promoted. They are so trustworthy. Oh, they are so wonderful. They're so amazing. They're so faithful. They, Elijah spirit could 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 discern and Elisha is saying now I'm coming into the baptism of that discernment. Elijah's spirit is wise and now Elisha is saying I'm coming in, unto the baptism of that wisdom. Now watch this here. Say Father in Jesus name I now claim and receive the spirit and, and, and the, no, 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 no. Father, in the name of Jesus, I claim and receive the baptism of sound wisdom. <sighs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I now claim and receive from you the baptism of the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of, sound wisdom, and the spirit of good understanding. I now receive the baptism of the spirit of sound wisdom from you, Lord, and the, 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 the spirit of good understanding. My gandolo shonangi jizo no gevele, agizo no gononje senengi nista na hanzo, a telebre kuba bubai bibien. Vendos, Dalidra nangle nos tele jezedel kura, kuran ze I now receive the spirit of knowledge, the baptism of the spirit of knowledge, and the baptism of the spirit of the fear of the Lord. I receive that. I receive the spirit of, uh, of knowledge and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. I receive the baptism right now. Now, watch this, watch this here. I receive the spirit of might from the Lord right now. I receive the spirit of might right now from the Lord. You know, the spirit of might is very amazing. Samson had the spirit of might. That's why he could break what, when the Philistines went go arrest him. Now, what's the mighty thing about you being able to break what the Philistines arrest you to do? The, the Philistines arresting Samson 
is dealing with strongholds, even generational strongholds that are often being stewarded by familiar spirits. So things that come to lock you up when you get to a certain age and like you bound to that behavior, you bound to that thought process. Ah, and, and you bound to that mindset. So now when the spirit of might breaks the yoke of continuation of cursed thinking, cursed ways, cursed mindsets, cursed behavior, cursed relationships. And so the spirit of might is, is really important because when the spirit of might come upon you, you're not just overcoming, you're overcoming with power, with charge, with energy, with fire, with brilliance, man, reno, stuna, angesho, stania. You, 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 you overcoming with great zeal and passion. You overcoming without regret. Because some people overcome sin and then they regret that they overcame it. You know, I stopped doing this, but I need to get back to doing it. I stopped talking to this person, but I need to start talking to them again. I stopped going to this place, but I need to start going there again. I stopped watching that. I need to start watching it again. So, the spirit of might is not just overcoming something that's wrong, but it's overcoming with your eyes straight forward. Your eyes are permanently looking towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You're forgetting those things that are behind you. The spirit of might smite whatever is not right, whatever is not of the light, whatever is of the night. The spirit of might smite. Huh? The spirit of might keep your light bright. Huh? It give you power over what is not right, what is not of the light, and what is of the night. The spirit of might smites. It kills. It kills, it reveals, and it heals. And then it empowers your will. It takes your will. <laughs> uh, I've been doing this. I've been doing this so 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 heavy you you gotta understand there's a strong 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 glory on here right now there's a strong glory. that's why i'm able to talk like like this you, you gotta understand you 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 have a glory cloud that's not always visible for people to see a glory cloud is carrying deep information from God, deep conversation from God, deep phone calls for God, deep text messages from God. You got to understand that when you have a glory cloud that you're operating in, there are thoughts that you will receive that lift you up in your finances. It makes you a multimillionaire because this glory is transferring a level of thinking within you for witty inventions, for mindsets, for education according to God, for wisdom according to God, for power according to God, for prosperity according according to God, for deliverance, according to God, for angelic ministry. And in the glory cloud, when the glory cloud is around you, is also carrying angelic telepathic communication. So angels are able to transfer stuff to you while they're looking at you. And you're not hearing nothing physically. You're not seeing nothing. Uh, 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 uh. You're not hearing nothing, seeing nothing physically. They just transferring it to you supernaturally because you're walking with that glory cloud. See, see, Moses, Leman, Moses was in a place where that glory cloud was following him everywhere he went. Why? Because he sought the Lord said, I don't want to do anything without your presence going with me. See, he he didn't prioritize the power to win battles. He prioritized the power giver. He didn't prioritize wealth, the power to get wealth. He prioritized the power giver of that power to get wealth. See, you, you, don't, you don't prioritize just the stripes of Jesus, but you prioritize the Jesus of the stripes. <laughs> Because uh, if, 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 if you prioritize in the stripes of Jesus and not the stripes, the Jesus of the stripes, 
even if you get healed, you're not going to go and use the healing to serve Jesus. You're going to take that healing from leprosy and you never going to show your face to Jesus again because you was looking at the stripes of Jesus, not the Jesus of the stripes. You was looking at the blessing of the Lord, not the Lord of the blessing. You was The hippo is more powerful than the lion. The hippo is more powerful than the lion. When God trains you to be a lion, he's not training you to be the highest level of champion. He's training you into the university of fierceness. He's giving you a dimension of hunting and hunting according to the spirit means that you become dedicated to not being robbed no more by the thief, that you want your inheritance and you want it now. And when you want it now, it doesn't mean that you invoke impatience and anxiety, but when you want it now, it means that you invoke determination to no longer sin against God. That, that mean that you invoke a passion to always acknowledge God in all his ways for him to direct your path. When you want your money and you want it now, it doesn't mean that you have an anxiety to do things that God don't want you to do to get money. That means that now I'm no longer going to let Satan interrupt my obedience. I'm not going to let Satan interrupt my sowing. I'm not going to let Satan interrupt my praise, my expectation, my fearlessness. I'm not going to let Satan interrupt my purity, my sanctification, my abstinence from sexual sin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to let Satan bring the bait of lust the bait of distraction, the bait of weariness, the bait of jealousy, the bait of fear. My, my, my. You see this here? You see this here? Be because now everything that I'm saying to you on here right now, there's a fire of God going down in your belly. Yeah. E e e e everything that I'm saying on here, there's fire power going through your being. I'm electrocuting you with divine virtue, divine wisdom, divine victory, divine justice, divine power. You get an anointed with justice before the justice and the affairs of your life. You, you become an anointed with favor. You become an anointed with power. You become an anointed with miracles before you see the miracles working on the outside. Miracles are working on the inside of you. Miracles are working on the inside of you. Every single word that I'm saying to you right now is to anoint you for the year of 2024. We are less than 30 days away from 2024. And the angel of the Lord is here listening to everybody's praise. He hear you thanking God right now. He hear your spirit leaping. He hear you jumping for joy. He hear you uh, cooperating with this word. And the angel of the Lord is going to go right there and start stirring up waters of provision, waters of healing. Waters of breakthrough, waters of elevation, waters of liberty, waters of increase, waters of restoration, waters of wisdom, waters, wells of knowledge, wells of discernment, wells of truth, wells of prayer. You gonna have a prayer mantle. You gonna have a praise mantle. You gonna you 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 not gonna be able to stop. You're not even gonna be able to eat your food without saying glory to God. You're not gonna be able to. Eat your food without saying glory to God. You're not going to be able to wake up without saying glory to God. 
You're not going to be able to go to sleep without saying glory to God because you're becoming filled with the spirit. When you're filled with the spirit, the spirit knows what the father wants. That's his spirit. So the father wants you to say this. The father wants you to do this. The father wants you to become this. You're going to become it. You're going to say it. You're going to do it. You're going to think it. You're going to act like it because his spirit is ruling you. That's what it means to be led by the spirit. If the spirit don't want to scroll on the phone, bless God, you ain't scrolling on no phone because you're filled with the what? The spirit. The spirit over all spirits. The Lord of hosts. The Lord strong and mighty in battle, the Lord of hosts, the King of glory. When his spirit is over you, you're not going to have no problem breaking free from things, breaking pe free from people, breaking free from addiction, breaking free from compulsive thoughts, breaking free from self-destructive behavior, breaking free from anxiety, breaking free from overthinking, breaking free from overthinking, breaking free from stress. You're not going to have no power. You ain't going to have no, 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 no powerlessness, rather. You're not going to have no struggle, no difficulty. Because when you're filled with the Spirit, it's the winds of God blowing again. The winds are blowing again. Watch, 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 watch throughout your city. Watch how that wind start blowing through your city. Watch how the wind start blowing through your city. Because the winds are blowing to get. I, I don't care what state you're in. Just study just, just study how the sand start lifting up off the ground during these days. Look how the sand start lifting up the ground. Watch the trees, how the wind start blowing. Look at the shifting going on because that's the angel of the Lord traveling on earth. That's the spirit of God traveling on the earth, going to the highways and the byways looking for who wants to be used and raised up from the miry clay and lifted up to the palace, raised up from poverty, lifted up into prosperity, raised up from sickness and disease, walking in supernatural healing power. Who wants the anointing? Who wants the glory? Who wants the supernatural lifestyle where angels are moving and delivering you all the time and God is your judge? The people on earth may not like you. The people on earth may have something to say about it, but God is able to make all grace about. God is able to make people like you. God is able to bring deliverance. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Let's go ahead, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Look what it says right here. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and let's go here to verse 10. It says, now he that ministered seed to the soil, both minister bread for your food. And then he multiply your seed sown, And he increase the fruits of your righteousness. So I want you to think about this harvest, Jesus. This harvest, Jesus is 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 responsible for the bread for your food. So I want you to catch this. Jesus is not just my leader, but my feeder. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. I, and, and, and there's three different realms of Jesus that happens in the harvest. Jesus leads, Jesus feeds, and Jesus heeds. My God. My God. My God. Could you write that real fast? Huh? Huh? Just that? Jesus feeds. Jesus leads. Jesus feeds. And Jesus heeds. Now that third realm is a little controversial. That third realm is a little controversial. But saints, let me tell you about Jesus uh, feeding and Jesus heeds heeding. When Jesus is feeding, it's, it's twofold. It's not just physical food, but it's also mental food. He, he Every day he has food that he wants. He has bread that he wants to enter in. That's called doctrine. My gosh, my God, that, that food, that food is for the mind. That food is for the emotions and that food is for um, your, your stability, your joy, your peace. But then when you talk about Jesus heeding, that's him honoring you because you honored him. 
That's him coming into alignment with the same spirit that you have. You have the spirit to obey his commands. So now he has the spirit to obey your commands. The relationship is mutual. See, when the blind people was crying out for Jesus to open up their eyes, they needed Jesus to heed them. No, 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 no. If Jesus don't heed them, they're going to stay blind. If Jesus don't heed them, they're going to stay without the ability to see. And those spirits are going to rule their sight system. But Jesus heeded them. Say what you want, what you want. That's Jesus heeding. In the harvest, Jesus will heed you. That's why you got to get into declaration. You got to start prophesying some things. What you want to see? What do you want to see in the year 2024? We less than 30 days to enter into the year 2024. Ma, 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 ma. What, what do you want to see in the year 2024? What do you want to see? What do you want to see? Let me tell you something about the powerful thing about the harvest realm of God. Whatever you claim, he going to bring it to you, but he going to test you so that you could receive it properly. Everything that you want to receive in the year 2024, if that's what you want to receive, you'll be able to receive it. But just know that he going to give you a grace to actually learn and to become equipped to receive it properly without it destroying you or bringing you into a downfall that was unnecessary. So everything, when you claim something in the harvest ability of Jesus, whatever you claim is going to happen. And since I want you to catch this, even when you claim and stuff financially, say you Say you claim 15 million. You, you got a figure in your mind. You got $15 million in your mind. You claim that. No, God ain't going to say, no, no, you ain't going to get no $15 million. No, no, no. Now you just activated the path to the $15 million. So when he tell you to disconnect from a nigga, stop getting mad and talk about, I can't do it. Okay, then don't come to me with no $15 million because you ain't got $15 million worth of capacity. Don't come to me and tell me that you 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 can't do this. You're not going to do this. It's hard for you to do this. And then you want me to drop 15 men. So if you at peace with you holding back from me, let me be at peace of holding back from you. See, see, this how that thing go. This how it go. This how it go. If you are right with holding back, if you can deny me and give me I uh, know uh, you say, no, nah, I ain't doing that for you. No, I ain't saying that for you. No, I ain't going there for you. Then be okay with me saying that the same way to you. That's what the scripture means. If you deny him, he going to deny you. So, so if, if, if you want the heeding Jesus, well, you can command and, and, and Isaiah, the book of Isaiah say, command ye me the work of my hands, command ye me. Command me of the work of my hands. If you want to have the heed in Jesus in operation, you better be a heeding of Jesus, a heeder of Jesus. You better be heeding yourself. Don't, 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 don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. If you want Jesus to heed you, start heeding him. Saints, that's why I got out of situations real fast because I'm a real submissive person. You ain't got to tell me I am not no stupid person. I'm not no ass. I know a lot of people, they, 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 they act like they all big and bad in public. But can you heed God when nobody watching you, when you're in the miry clay, when ain't nobody praising you, ain't nobody know who you is? Can you obey God like that? I, I'm not a hard-headed person. If I hear the Lord tell me to do something, I'm going to do it. I, I ain't going to be up there fighting with him three weeks, him and him up there still. God don't repeat himself around me. That's why that's why we got so much power together, because there's no repetitive conversation. I don't forget either. I write down what God tells me in my heart. I, I hide the word in my heart. The Bible says that word I've hid in my heart that I might not sin against. It. I think that's Psalm 119. God don't got to repeat himself around me. He, if God tell me not to open up the window, but to open up the door, 
He ain't got to remind me 10 weeks from now. Remember, I said open up the window. Uh, 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 don't open up the window. Open up the door. He ain't got to remind me. When God got to remind you, you blocking off seasons of provision and promotion and prosperity. You blocking it off. You want to have power with God. Don't let him have to repeat himself. You want to have power with God. Take power over your emotions. Stop getting offended. Instead of get su uh, 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 offended, get suspended. Suspend yourself. Every time you're about to get offended, ah, shut up. You dead. We dead with Christ. No longer do I live, but Christ liveth in me. The life that I'm now living in my flesh is by the faith of the Son of God. I'm not living by feelings. I'm living by the faith of Jesus, and Jesus did not miss in this moment. I don't miss in this moment. My goodness. I have the same mind that was in Christ is also in me. The same power, the same grace, the same ability, the same focus, the same consistency, faithfulness. That's why I'm telling you, Revelation 19, 11, he was called what? Faithful and what? True. That's me. Everything Jesus called, that's who I be. You want to know who I am? You want to understand who I am? You want to check my character? Well, just look in the word. The same thing you see with Jesus is the same thing you see with me. Jesus said, fear not. I ain't got no fears. Jesus said, worry not. I ain't got no worries. Jesus said, sin not. I ain't got no sin. Jesus said, don't go to the left or to the right. I don't go to the left or to the right. Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled. I don't let my heart be troubled. Jesus said, if I give, it shall be given unto me. Well, bless God, it shall be given unto me. And how is going to be given? Not shorter than what I gave. How is going to be given? Not lesser than what I gave. How is going to be given? Not smaller than what I gave. It's going to be given what? Good measure. It's not no evil measure. That mean that Satan ain't got no say so in what's coming back to me. It's a good measure. That means that God the Father is the one deciding that he want to bless me. And what he measured out for me is what's going to come to me. And it's bigger than what I gave. And then it said press down. Why is it pressed down? Because it's not coming from hell. It's coming from heaven. So if something is coming from above, it got to come down. He pressing it down. Why is it? When you press something, you exert and force. When you press something down, you exert and force. You exert in power. You exert in aggression and violence. And the Bible said the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent take it by what? By force. By force. So now we're dealing with the force of God is coming in my provision. Because God know that demon is going to challenge it. And demon is going to want to delay it and hinder it. And make it none of, none of, none of, none of avail. And it's going to be void. It's never going to come to pass. But he's going to force it down. He coming with his force. He putting might on my money. Might on my money coming to me. Now he putting might on my money. And then we talk about shaking together. The reason why people be shaking salt, because they want all of the tastiness and the savoriness of salt to come out. You shake stuff. You shake some whipped cream. How many of y'all done shook some whipped cream? <laughs> I don't know nothing about it, but I'm asking you, how many of y'all done shook some whipped cream? I don't know nothing about it. All I know about whipped cream is on my pancakes. And I'm talking about little pancakes. I just want to clarify because we got uh, we got to understand there's different things going on. You, you know, groceries is not always groceries. So um, I, I'm talking about the actual pancakes you're cooking about or you put on the pan. That's what I'm talking about. So when 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 how many y'all understand that when you shake <laughs> when you shake stuff together, even milk. You sh when you shake milk together. You trying to get all of the ingredients in the milk together. So just think about this. Shaking together. Shaking together. Imagine God is making sure that the ingredients of his love, his care, his romance, his passion for you, his desire for you to enjoy your life. He's pitting all of that together. He's shaking it together. 
and, and, and saints, you understand when God is shaking stuff together, it means he don't want you to miss one ounce of experiment, experience. He don't want one encounter with provision to be uh, uh, annihilated from you. He don't want it to be separated from you. He wants you to taste and see that the Lord is good. And then what's the last part? He said running over, running. It's running over. It, it then says walking over. So, so this is an urgency. This is a quickness. This is a quickness to the financial equation. It's running over. Ma, it ma. It's, it's running over. So, so it's not even taking its time. It's running over. That means that it can't be contained. You can't put it in a cup. He, he, he making your cup run over. The, the level in which you thought God was going to bring a deliverance, God said, I'm going to exceed your expectation. Just think about it. This is the harvest. I received the harvest manifesting Lord in my life. Say, Father, you are a good father, and I am your child, and I thank you for the good life that is now being made manifest for me. Your father, you're a good father, and I am your child, and I thank you for now bringing the manifestation of what you desired for me to inherit. And Lord, I thank you for giving me power over myself. Thank you for giving me power over my emotions. Thank you for giving me power over my decisions. I'm no longer a slave to sin. I'm a slave to you, and I like it. T tell them like that. I like it. Father, I like being your slave. Because if I'm your if I'm your biggest slave, I'm your biggest son. Cause